So in this video we're going to look at the costs of owning a motorhome and uh, we've had this motorhome for about four years now so we're going to do a bit of a four-year review like what went wrong, what we like and what we dislike and uh, do a bit breakdown of the sort of the costs of running a motorhome. So I hope you find it useful and uh, let's get on with it. So it's back from its habitation, vehicle and MOT service is always a fairly expensive time. You've got the paperwork there. I have got the paperwork here, yeah. Yeah. Which so, would you like first? <laughs> uh, talk about the habitation service first. I mean, uh, habitation... Uh, that one? Yeah, no, I was looking for the cost of it. Oh, the cost of it, £250. Yeah, so £250 for the habitation service. So habitation service really, for us, owning a motorhome with a 10-year body shell, um, that's the reason for doing it, I guess, is... Uh, so that you know that there's no damp in the, the motorhome, that there's no gas leaks, uh, the water isn't dripping everywhere, that everything works correctly. I mean, on previous habitation services, they found things like the window catches don't work, which I hadn't noticed. No, that's right. So there's nothing to report on the habitation service. I'm really pleased again, no damp. No damp at all. This uh, is four years in the Bolero, we had no damp on that either, did we? No. So uh, that's the uh, biggest worry I always think is uh, getting damp in a new motorhome. Mm. Uh, so yeah, definitely not got that. Um, they said they were unable to take readings of the lithium battery. Right. Uh, uh, because it's, uh, it, they can't do a condition test on it. So, uh, but they said the voltage is okay, so that's, that's good. But other than that, there's nothing really else to report. They do a, an RCD test to make all that sure that the breakers work and all of that and uh, gas check they do a, a gas check on it yeah so uh, we have been offered a, a gas checker haven't we <laughs> we well, everybody else i think yeah i think everyone yeah. else has done a gas checker yes. but, uh, no, yeah. the, but the damp report is really pleased with yeah, yeah. yeah. so then it went uh, to the garage around the corner for its yeah. vehicle uh, i had a question someone was asking who does the uh, do todds do the servicing for the vehicle uh, specifically relating to warranty. Uh, I think some people still think that you have to take your vehicle to the manufacturer's dealers, as it were. Yeah. The law yes. changed quite a few years ago. Uh, yeah. So if you buy a... Uh, a Renault? A Renault. Yeah, good one. <laughs> you buy a Renault, you don't have to take it to a Renault dealer uh, for the warranty to still be valid. All they will say is that you have to use genuine parts. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So the same goes for Fiat. We... Uh, we take it to Todd's, and Todd's take it to a company called Wonkall, who are uh, in in Leyland. Uh, they're actually in Leyland, just outside Preston, and uh, they do the the MOT and the vehicle itself service. And that, <laughs> unfortunately, that is the most expensive part of this habitation and vehicle service, and that cost us five hundred and one pound seventy one. So that was MOT engine service. Oil is incredibly expensive these days. Yes, it's the, right. yeah, over £100 to, for the oil itself. Fully synthetic engine yeah. oil. Yes. It ought to be gold dust at that price, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's probably cheap. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to be doing that yourself. No. So, well, I don't want you doing it. No, certainly no. not. But yeah, I mean, uh, you, to keep the vehicle warranty, you have to have the vehicle service. So, yes. so that's, that's essential as well. Yes, you could do it yourself. I, I, I know that but uh, we want to keep a, a warranty on it. Okay, so that's the vehicle and habitation service, um, and it's passed its MOT. Yes. Yeah. So what we, what we normally do this time of year is look at the costs of the motorhome for the last year. Things that stick out are the vehicle service was 2,125.75. Um, other things, meals out, two and a half thousand, so if we <laughs> yes, cut so that if, out. So if we did more cooking, we, we'd save some money. Well, we, <laughs> apart from buying the bits to cook. Yeah, yeah the uh, ferries were a bit higher because we went on the tunnel and we also went on the Isle of Wight ferry and we took the car. And we the, went on the Orkney ferry And well. we went on the Orkney ferry, so uh, that's over £800 this year. Yeah. But what I noticed that was low because i keep a separate record was yeah. gas buying gas. a gas cylinder yeah we, we bought we, two bottles in the whole year yeah we, we often think whether it's worth buying a refillable gas but as we've only spent 59 pounds on 
bottled, bottled gas, gas. Yeah. spending 300 and something on refillable, refillable gas, gas seems a bit... Yeah, that's right. Maybe, maybe, you know, in the future we'll think about it. But. Yeah, and a staggering amount of £33.42 on parking the motor. Yeah. In car parks. Okay. And things. <laughs> How many yeah. different apps did we use for that's, that? That's right, yeah. Fuel um, was 2,277.72. Yeah. Now, another figure is the insurance and tracker. Okay. And I've got You've that. Got a separate figure for that. I've got a separate figure for that. Yeah, yeah that was 1,033.80. Altogether. Altogether. Um, and that breaks down into the actual insurance yeah. uh, with Safeguard, 71619. Yeah. The travel insurance that we took out when we went on a Euro trip with a camping in, it's not camping in, caravan and motorhome club, that was 15264. And the tracker, 135. And the tracker's been 135. That's a sergeant tracker. That's isn't the it? renewal price. So it's, yeah. Yeah, so it's been the same for the last two years, that, yes. that price. And we know that works because they rang you while we were on yeah. the uh, tunnel, didn't they? Because they're detecting movement. Yeah, it's not just the tracker that. No. That's the tracker and the remote control. Right, the swift to, command. To, yeah, yeah, the swift command remote control. Yes. So, yeah, we, we thought that was worth it and uh, we've renewed that. So. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, so a little bit more on why the vehicle servicing was 2,125.75. Yeah. Well, as we've said, we've obviously had the vehicle service done and we've had the habitation check. But also during this year, we've had airbag issues yeah uh, it cost us 84 pounds initially to get um what they call crash, crash data. data to yeah. clear it yeah. we thought that had done it it went for about three months didn't it three to yeah. four months then when we set off one morning it came back again yeah so we didn't think we had a lot of option rather than keep sending it off or whatever so you went to um, the Fiat professionals, didn't you, in Walton Summit? Yeah, and that's the other option if you want to take it to a, a Fiat dealer for your service in his uh, Fiat professional uh, dealership. We have one at Walton Summit, which is just off the uh, M6. Yes. Yeah. And that cost us, unfortunately, £710.14. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> Um, we bought two new front tyres earlier last year, didn't we? Because yeah, this they, year. This year, yeah, sorry, yeah. this year, because they were getting down to the limit, weren't they? they the were, 20p Well, check. they won't get to, they were about two millimetres, and the legal limit is about a millimetre and a half, so I thought it was worth changing it. And we put them on the front, because I think we benefit more from them on the front. They are uh, cross-climate tyres as well, and there's, there is a separate video on that somewhere, uh, there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it> up there <laughs> so they were uh, 480 yeah um we got a new vehicle battery didn't you because yeah. we thought well, that, you know all these issues about this airbag well a lot of people had, had well a lot of people had said that it's problems with battery um the battery voltage drops because of all the checks and everything that's going on when you switch the ignition on and the voltage drops and if you carry on turning on into the starter and getting it started uh, that voltage can go even low, lower, you know, so if it goes down to 10 volts or so, that appears to cause the corruption in the airbag module. And mm. um, from the research that our friend Chris at Southport MOT did, he said that that's, that's probably what's causing it. And he said that the, in, in uh, motorhomes, they tend to leave the standard battery in there. There is a battery that's supposed to put in motorhomes because there's, there's more a current draw on them because there's all the, the stuff that's going on in the habitation area as well mm. as what's going on in the cab. Yes, yes. So, uh, um, so he, we fitted a, a, an uprated battery and at the same time we fitted a lithium battery, but more on that later. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so that's basically why that's higher this year. Um, the van has actually done 26,723 miles, hasn't right. it? Yeah. So that's Which why is it's... not as much as we expected to do um, because uh, for 18 months or so we weren't doing anything with it. We or couldn't... hardly anything. No, no. So that, that nicely brings me on to the four year yeah. totals. Okay. Because I did lump together the original years to 2020 2021 yeah because we, uh, we well, couldn't we go bought any... it, we bought it in 2019 in December. so the first full year was 2020 yeah and we yeah. couldn't go any we went i think we had a couple of trips didn't we before the lockdowns yeah and then we couldn't go anywhere for no. odd, odd times throughout no. the year 
Yeah, so basically, I've, I've, you'll see up on the screen, I've got 2021, 2022, 2023. And most years, when you you look at the totals are almost the same a little bit less in 2022 mainly because I don't know why, why was it less I don't know I'd have to do some comparisons vehicle servicing was a lot less because we had less problems with it yeah that's right because we hadn't used it so much yeah <laughs> yeah well we were also having problems with the airbags so 700 and something 800 pounds on well, I mean, airbag problems yeah. we didn't have so many meals out in 20, 20 21 no. i wonder why <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that that may, may be interesting so there's an overall cost yeah of all these things um, over four years is £45,174.32. Yeah. Which is quite frightening when you, when you, you look at it. When you add it all up, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's everything, is it, then? Yeah, that's yeah. everything. That includes site fees. But also, we didn't do any parking in 2021. Good no, to no. <laughs> yeah. I think we took. I think we tended to take the car a lot then because yeah. we were using yeah. the the van more like, like a caravan on yeah. sites weren't we I think we took the car and and we there weren't a lot of places you could park and stop no. weren't there in 2020 no, that's right. so that's, that's right. probably why okay okay so that, that's uh, the total over four years for gas is 312 pounds yeah. so over four years yeah now you had something on site fees site fees um we we did a separate video on didn't we yeah yeah. Uh, that, that would have gone out already. Okay. Yeah. Um, site fees are fairly consistent, actually. Okay, which is a bit of a surprise. Isn't yeah, it? I that's think right. The prices are going up. Whether yeah. we've done less, I don't know. Probably not. I don't think so. I think the the days out were well, they would have been less, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. Some in the first year. Yeah. Yeah, it's ranged from four thousand three hundred to four thousand nine hundred. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so now you've got something about uh, four years uh, using using it. Yeah, against, I thought against this, running costs. I, I love doing things like this. I've got yeah. one where I've compared compared what we've actually what the vehicles cost. Yeah. You know what, what running costs sort of things yeah. um, and things we bought for it. Yeah. Um, and that comes to fourteen thousand two hundred ninety-seven thirty-four. So that includes tax servicing and the insurance and the tracker the habitation services we've had done and the accessories we've bought okay so that's just to get the van you know yeah. so we can go somewhere in it yeah um and then against it i've put what we've used it for so we've been on ferries with well, it cost we've, of using it. yeah cost of using it we've yeah. bought fuel seven thousand yeah. eight hundred pounds worth we've bought gas for it we've had Six thousand three hundred fifty-six. <laughs> keep going on about meals out. I like my meals out. Yeah, I know. Uh, we've been to museums and entrance fees, yeah. so that's uh, not including National Trust and English oh, Heritage. Oh, Scottish museums, which are all free. It's just the ones we've had to pay for. Yeah. That's seven hundred thirty-two. Parking forty-seven pounds fifty-eight. Yeah. And site fees over four years fourteen thousand one two three ninety. Which is obviously the biggest cost there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, we would save money if we weren't using campsites, but we like campsites. So, <laughs> so we had five hundred twenty-six nights at campsites. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So over the four-year period, the average has been twenty-six pound eighty-five. Okay. Okay. So okay, thanks so, for that. Yeah. yeah that sort of just proves that we're using it, doesn't it? Really. Yeah. Okay. So, um, on another note... Um, well, yeah, we wanted to talk about the shop. Uh, we, we set up this shop um, company, a local company, who uh, design... They're called Design and Personalise and gives you an idea of what they do. And they take things like uh, wine glasses, mugs, uh, chopping boards, T-shirts, and they'll design and personalise it. And they've been designing and personalising our logo on those sort of items. So I got a Shopify shop set up. It's about two years now. It's been going. I don't think it's that long. No, no, about no I months, think it's about maybe. eighteen months, if that. Okay, so um, they do all, all the all the work for us. They, you know, they print in the mugs. So I don't have to print the mugs. They do uh, Amazon do all the delivery. Uh, so we don't really have to do anything for it, but we do have to pay for the Shopify, and obviously we we pay for the uh, uh, the products that are sold yes. to to our subscribers now but I, I, when i when i set this up i didn't want to be the sort of person who was always saying hey go to our shop 
<laughs> Check out our merch. <laughs> you know, yeah. I didn't want to keep doing that. So, no. so I've, I've tended not to mention the shop. When we have mentioned the shop, we've had a few sales on there. Yes, yeah. And uh, since I'm uh, mentioning it, it is www.bobbernshaw.co.uk. Go there and check out the merch. <laughs> yes, because at the moment, I mean, my sort of mm. money hat on. Yeah. It's financial cost... control hat. <laughs> it's. I mean, we've had, I suppose, about seventeen hundred pounds worth of sales, but yeah. against that, obviously, we've got the cost of the manufacturer of the items, and we've got this Shopify, the Shopify cost. Shopify cost. Yeah. And that went up from. 66p to 19 pounds to 25 pounds so yeah. it's it's basically costing us 194 pounds up to date in this tax yeah. year and i don't think we've sold anything since september we haven't have we? sold one t-shirt since september so, so we've so had to be realistic you know if it's not required then we yeah. can't keep on can't keep on using it i will i will try and mention it occasionally but please if you if you're looking for something and what I would suggest, rather than buying a Bob Earnshaw T-shirt, have a look at uh, some of the things they can personalise for you. So if you want, if you've got a big celebration coming up, an anniversary or you know something like that, they can they can do glasses and and wine ca mm. uh, things, and they can engrave some special message on there, or you know, or or anything or any of the goods that they can do. And if you're interested in that, then um, let let us know. Um, I'm sure we can arrange something. I, I think my problem is that that's not obvious on the on the shop that they do. No, no, that's right. And I mean, we started the shop really because we, you you were impressed. You went and had a look round and I'm impressed you know, what they do, the right? local yeah. firm. And yeah. We wanted to sort of help them as much as they yeah. would help us. But yeah. obviously, we have to think that twenty five pound a month for no sales is yeah. not not going to. Yeah, I mean, the last. reason for the Shopify shop is so that we can sell personalised merch, merchandise but yeah, you know if you right. want to help out a small business then yes. let us know and we'll put you in touch with them directly yeah so. okay then otherwise right. um, let us know do you think it's worth us carrying on doing merchandise I know some people who were I met were very happy to have a, a Bob and Shaw t-shirt well, we did meet quite a few people didn't we with yeah. a t-shirt on yeah. yeah yeah we did so uh, yes so yeah let us know what you think somebody famously said they were only here for the camping when we first said you, when we first said you we have a shop, yeah. somebody said in the comments, "I'm only here for the camping." Yeah, well, that's right. That's so right. Thought, well, okay. that's fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, but like I say, it's costing us money to run, so we're considering not not doing it anymore. So yeah, let us know what you think. Right. So, do we want to start with what we liked? Yeah, let's start with what we liked about the motor. Positive. Yeah. Yeah. So, comfortable single beds. Yeah, the the beds are brilliant. I mean, the reason for this van being so long is that it's got two uh, single beds, and the beds are just great. If you want to crash somewhere, you're tired, you can go and have a lie down, mm. and they're just so comfortable. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we haven't got any duvets on there at the moment because we've only got just got the van back, but uh, this one here is six foot two and a half or something like that. I thought it was yeah, it's, it's six, six foot, foot three, three at least. Yeah. Yeah, this one's slightly shorter. I don't know why, but I end up sleeping on this one. And that, that's my cover for the, uh, covering up the dashboard, in case you're wondering what it is. But yeah, they are wonderfully comfortable, these beds. So definitely, yeah, worth it. So the other thing we like is the rear washroom. Uh, there's plenty of room in here. Um, normally we have carpet in here and we have carpet out there, but like I say, that's all in the garage at the moment. But yeah, no, it is a great washroom. Switch the light on. And the criticism is the sink is a bit small. We'll come on to that a little bit later. Uh, the great shower, a good good space in there, and it's one of our favourite things about this motor. I mean, you can get changed in here because you've got a lot of floor space here. So yeah. Okay. Right. The next is the sofas in the lounge. The what? Sofas in the lounge. I couldn't, like hear, the... I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. So sofas in the lounge. Yeah. Normally we have, they're covered yeah. up, but yeah, yeah. I mean, normally they they are covered up, and we've covered them up, and it's kept them nice and clean as well, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, I mean, this that sofa there is a little bit longer than this one, but it's great when you're entertaining. We don't I, honestly, we don't sit lounging on the sofas. We tend to go on the bed if we, we want to relax. But yeah, great sofas. 
Okay. Um, kitchen area, quite like that, don't we? Yeah, kitchen area. has got the laptop in it at the moment, but... Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Cooking I mean, the laptop. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not a bad workspace. I mean, let's move some of this junk off here. And that area there and here, we tend to use that for the toaster and the coffee maker and all that sort of thing. So <laughs> there is a bit of preparation area and it's, it's better than a lot of motones we look at. Uh, because it, it does stick out this way here and it's got this sort of traditional uh, cooker here, the oven grill and it's got a, um, you can't see it under here, but it has got the electric hot plate. There's a light up there and uh, you've got the, uh, the microwave here and a fairly big cupboard there as well. So yeah, no, the kitchen is good. I do like the kitchen. And then I said the captain's chairs were quite, oh, yeah. were quite comfortable, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, the captain's chairs, I call them that, They're, they are comfortable. I mean, the same on old Fiat Ducatas. These have got the swift covers on them with sort of a built-in headrest type thing. But yeah, they're, they're fully reclinable. I mean, the only thing I wish they were is I wish they were um, heated. But other than that, no, very, very comfortable. OK, um, then I've said we... We like this swift control panel. Yeah, this is one of the best things about uh, this Motown is this touch panel. It just makes everything so much easier. This is the Audi control panel. We hardly ever touch that because you can do all the, the main things through through this panel. You know, you switch the pump on, your awning light, your lighting is dimmable as well. So, you know, you can dim it and brighten it. I have to have it on bright because otherwise you get flashy when I'm filming uh, and that's the the lights in the other room you know and you can check your power consumption it tells you how much power you use and you can limit it if you're on a low amp hookup uh, you can choose which battery you're using you've got the settings you can control the fridge from here as well fridge is off at the moment and you can set the temperature on the fridge and you can see if it's too warm or too hot or or tend to leave it on auto, but you can switch to gas or two, uh, 12 volt or 240. There's so much to like about that panel. Mm, and it's also an app on your phone, isn't it? As yeah, well, that's you can right. Do most things. Yeah, on. You, you can do the same, most of the same things. I can't think there's one thing. I you don't think you can do the fridge. Can't, can't empty the water. Can't empty the water, that's right. That's right. Well, I think that's a bit, you know, if yeah, you weren't near the van. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the things I thought they could have put on the app. But yes, you can empty the fresh water and the wastewater from here. The v we'll, we'll come on to the things we don't like. <laughs> well, I, think, I like the fact that you, you can do that. We just yeah. didn't like the fact that one of them packed up. No, that's right. Well, I'll we'll, we'll say we'll come on to the yeah. things we dislike. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I've, I've then got the Alder heating. Which All right, we the like. heating, which, <laughs> which is this thing here. The great thing about that is that it is radiators behind that sofa, that sofa, behind both the beds. There's a little blower here that uh, will blow out warm air for you. It comes out here as well, doesn't it? The front. Yeah, and there's a little vent at the front as well. So it, you can get this van fairly warm because it's got those blowers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I, well, one of the things I mean I should have mentioned it while you were in the washroom area is the toilet. So I'm going back is into it, the toilet then. Toilet is at good level. Okay. <laughs> it's just so we've recently experienced a lot that it's not. Yeah, a lot of them are up on plinths, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Right. So while you're in the bedroom area, we also think we quite like the wardrobes, don't we? Yeah. Let's have a look at the wardrobes. Obviously, there's nothing in them. Um, yeah, so they're quite big and they're quite wide and they're reasonably tall. Uh, they could be taller, obviously, but you've got a gap for your feet <laughs> where the bed is. Uh, there's, there's two of them, you know, so the amount that we stick in here is a sticker wall. The amount that we stick in here is, uh, is quite amazing, really. It's not just clothes, coffee maker and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I've also then said uh, the TV point in the bedroom. Yeah. So, yeah, TV point in the bedroom. Um, we've got a doubly here. So we've got our uh, Avtex TV with the sound bar in here. And uh, the thing we use on this is the Netflix, not Netflix, the um, Amazon Fire TV where we watch Netflix. And that's about all the TV we watch, isn't it? Yeah. That and a bit of YouTube. 
Yeah, we hardly ever put the aerial up now. No. So, yeah, so the plug for the Amazon Fire Stick and the, the power for the soundbar and the TV itself. And it's just perfect. And it just works really well in here. We have got, if you notice, we have got a TV just by Jenny there. Hardly ever use that. I'm thinking of actually taking it off the wall, but... Yeah, it's in the wrong place. It should be over there. Which is one of the things we dislike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just finishing off what we do like yeah. is the ability to tow the car. Oh yeah. Which isn't what ev everyone wants to do. We know no, that. No. But for us, it's been invaluable, hasn't it? Yeah, that's right. And it's got the capacity to do it. Yeah. 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 And then the only other thing I put is we quite like the fact we've had no damp. <laughs> that's right. Because we have. There has been in some really well, awful yeah, weather. I mean, look, look at the. The rain up there, it's, it's just been, it's know, just been awful, the weather, recently. Well, yeah. over the four years we've had it, it's yeah. been in quite a few storms yeah. up in the Lake Districts and everywhere. That's right. Right, so do you want to go on to... The only other thing I, I had that we, yeah. we quite like is the outside lockers, but we don't want to go around all them, do we? Well, I'll show you the, I'll show you the outside lockers. Yeah, we'll particularly the, the wet locker. Yeah, OK. Yeah, so first locker here, and that thread there. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a huge locker under the bed, so it's the whole bed up. The only sort of intrusion there is the wheel arch. And you've got the same on the other side. Now you've got this big locker in here. Okay. It's a tall locker, really. It goes all the way up. Useful for your golf clubs, I guess. I tend to put the chairs in there. Another locker there. Go around the other side. Yeah, the other thing that's really useful is this locker here. This is, a, I suppose, a wet locker, really, it's sort of a metal locker, but tend to keep the sort of the wet things in there. Side locker. I've got a, another locker here, and that's a, a cupboard locker. It was the gas locker, it used to be gas locker on previous versions. Quite a nice handy locker to have. Yeah, because they move the gas locker round here, so you can fit two um, fairly big gas bottles in there. So no, that's good. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, what we've got now is what what we didn't like so much, or what we don't like so much. Okay. The shape of the bathroom sink. I think you mentioned that, haven't you? Yeah. So it doesn't make it very easy to use. No, no, it's it's just why why the I don't know why we could have done that square, couldn't they? Really, I suppose, but gives you more foot room. But yeah, okay. Uh, the weak struts on the beds. Yeah. Which aren't a problem when there's hardly anything on it. And um, you've got a wonderful locker space under here. Lots of space under here, but it's supported by these gas struts. And they're really not strong enough to hold the bed up, even with no bedding on it. You just put a bit of pressure on that and it's timber. <laughs> yes. Next. Uh, next, what have I got next? Um, yeah, uh, we don't like, the, didn't never like the table, did we? Apart from when we had the awning up. Oh yeah, yeah. The portable table. Portable table, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, this portable table, it's stowed away in the washroom, so you have to unclip it here and there, unfold, well, once you get there, unfold it, cart it all the way through the living room, and it takes up most of the space where the camera is at the moment. So <laughs> a couple of things that the, the motome is lacking, really, wasn't it? Yeah. When we were looking at this motome, uh, 
five years ago really, when it first came out, we were put off because of lack of payload. It's about 200 and something, wasn't it? It's something ridiculous, 226 kilograms, yes. which is just hopeless, really hopeless. But uh, we, we did like the layout and we liked, like we said, a lot of things about it. And then we found out we could upgrade the chassis to 3850, which gave us an extra 350 kilograms payload. So mm. that sort of solved the problem. What I would say, though, is really this is a 3,500 kilogram van because that's the cha what the chassis was intended for, really. So I would have much preferred this van if it had the same chassis as the Bolero, the 4250 chassis. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I, think it, I think it's not as light, the chassis. Therefore, I think it twists a little bit sometimes. Notice it particularly um, when you park on, up on a thing that the, the the door doesn't always shut properly. Yes, yeah. Which is a little bit worrying. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Having said that though, I thought we used to get that with the Bolero. Did we? Yes, if we were parked yeah. up on chocks at the back yeah. and that used to uh, be difficult okay. to shut. Okay. So I don't think that's unique to this. No, no, it just seems a shame that it didn't have the heavier chassis. The other thing mm. about the heavier chassis is that it, I think they've got better brakes, the heavier vehicles. So, yeah, um, I don't think the brakes on this are the world's best. No, no, that's more to yes. So that's to do with the vehicle and the chassis itself, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It? That's right. Yeah. I mean, one other thing we didn't really nearly put us off this van when we first looked at it at the NEC were these front oh, cupboards. Oh, these cupboards. Yeah, let me show you that. Yeah, and it, we we saw this. And we o we opened the cupboard and it, it bashes against this thing here, the same on the other side, because they put this great big surround on here and it had has quite a low roof really. I mean, you can stand up in most of the van but I can't stand up with that there no. and, and those cupboards bang against that. So that nearly put us off this van. That's right, yeah. There was just so much else that we like that uh, yeah. you, you just uh, get used to the fact you've got to hold that if you're putting something in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's Poppy's cupboard, that one, isn't it? Yeah, so that's right. So you're, you're holding the cupboard and getting things out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And you missed um, oh, the yeah. power points at the front here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the power points. Um, the Bolero had a power point just there. And if you've got a laptop just here, that's mm. incredibly useful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they're, I mean, they're not major things, and they weren't things that put us off in the first no, place, were they? No. So now we come on to, which isn't, isn't a huge list, what went wrong. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so it's not a great long list. No, okay. Um, the vehicle, um, the worst thing I suppose we had was the air conditioning belt failure. Well, no, if it's the worst thing. I mean, um, it was a bit scary. Well, it was scarier that it could have done more damage. Um, because uh, when we took it to the to uh, Southwell MOT carriage, he, he he said, "Well, if that had sort of wrapped itself round the cam belt, then you you know you're talking about engine destruction." Yes. So yeah. yeah, a little bit worrying that a belt that can come off or break so easily could cause so much damage. Mid but yeah, you know, but that, maybe that's fixed. a problem with Fiat Ducatos. Isn't it, it? Again, it's the vehicle, isn't it? It's yeah. not the yeah. not the motor. Yeah. Um, then the dreaded airbag module. I think. Oh yeah, what what an absolute. About fast that is i mean i've never known anything well never known anything like that i mean fiat citroen and persia all know about the problem mm. but they're not doing anything about it I, I had a long conversation with fiat uh, customer service and it was like i was like bashing yourself over the head with a baseball bat really <laughs> it was about as much much help you just kept saying there's no recall there's yeah no there's recall. Yeah, i said i know there's no recall <laughs> what i'm trying to say is there should be a recall for it <laughs> You didn't get anywhere, I didn't did get you? anywhere, so, no. so unless, you know, the likes of Witch or... Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> elf and Safety can take it up. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the, the waste valve. Um, we've only had, I mean, people have had problems with these dump valves. We've had one go, haven't we? we that had was the, the waste We had one. it jammed shut on the waste uh, valve. People have had the freshwater valve fail as well. They've got these motors and it turns a wheel that turns a cog and 
I think they get gunged up. I think they, you know, if you get mm. fat or something in them, I, I think that sort of kills the motor trying to try to open it. Or if it gets frozen, I think that's the other possible reason. It did get it? frozen, didn't it? That one when we went to that's uh, true, isn't Oxen it? Yeah. Hall because yeah. you had trouble. Um, the waste one, in the the, water. both ones got frozen up, didn't they? Yes. Even though we had all the heating on and we had the tank heaters on. Yeah. So maybe that's what did the waste valve, I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, so, that, and then, I mean, this, I don't, <laughs> the heater switch sticking on, uh, <laughs> you wouldn't, why you switched it off, I don't know. I'm doing know. a video, I think. Well, you were, yeah, you were trying to prove something to do with it power was, banks. It was, or... yeah, it was a power bank video, so <laughs> hands up. <laughs> Like, one of them. <laughs> one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. No, I switched it off, and it wouldn't. It stayed off, didn't it? It wouldn't come back on. No. No. And so... uh, we, were, we were going to book it into Todd's, and they'd arranged to to get a replacement switch for us, which was very nice of them. And then I, I thought, well, I'd just better try it before I take it, and it it came on again. It's yeah. Stayed on. Yeah. It's off. Well, things are often like that, and the panic that you know it's broken, yeah. never going to be fixed, yeah. and then yeah. suddenly it's okay. And the other thing we had was the solar regulator. Oh yeah, the solar uh, regulator. And I think a few people with Swifts have had solar regulators uh, fail as well. For no apparent reason. No, it just kept charging and charging the battery, didn't it? Yeah. And you yeah. were getting, I mean, that's another beauty of that Swift command thing. You were getting emails, weren't you, <laughs> telling you that, yeah. I don't know, it said high voltage, was it, or something? Uh, I can't remember. It was getting up to 50, 14. Oh, that's right. No, it failed. It failed to regulate. Mm, yeah. That's what was happening. It was overcharging the battery. Yeah. So you kept getting these emails yeah, saying, saying battery I, overcharged. Ba battery overcharged. Yeah. 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 That's the regulator in the cupboard there. If you can see it. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah, I had to take the microwave out <laughs> to, to get to the cables because the cables weren't quite long enough to to actually replace. So yeah, that was fun. Right, uh, interior problems we had. We had yeah. the toilet solenoid failed oh, yeah, in that I'd... first week. Yeah, that's so right. it kept filling the toilet up. Even yeah, every we time weren't... we switched the taps on, the toilet was flashing. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> so it, stu it stuck open, I think. That's right, so you yeah. took it to Todd's, didn't you? They yeah. changed they it changed and we yeah. never had any more problems. No. Cupboard door trims, we had to have all new oh, yeah, cupboard I doors because think... they didn't match the new ones they were making. The cupboard door trims that's this bit here and what we found was that this bit here was actually peeling off so we we identified about three or four cupboards that needed replacement because of that and they did it under warranty they got the new cupboards Todd's got sent the new cupboards from the company that make the cupboards via Swift I guess and lo and behold they were all different shapes yeah this little kink. It changed, didn't it? For some they reason. changed this sort of curvature here. So that in the end, they had to change all the cupboard doors. Yeah. Well, we haven't had any problem with the new ones, have we? No. Trim or anything? No. Right. Um, so the other thing, we had a, a leak behind the shower, didn't we? And that's apparently a common fault with the caravans and the motorhomes that have got that particular shower. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so... Uh, both motorhomes and caravans with the same shower had, behind there they hadn't done the filler behind this sort of panel hadn't done the filler properly and so there were leaks uh, behind that it should really have been like a recall for that but anyway uh, Todd's had spotted that and uh, they they put more sealer in there yeah one thing we found well, one thing we found was missing when we, well, shortly after we got the van, was this. Oh God, it's got to hold the bed up, you see. But one thing we found was missing was this wheel arch cover. It's a bit of insulation to, well, to stop the cold getting in, because we noticed there was condensation forming on the plastic wheel arch, and they put that on there to stop that condensation. And Swift sent Todd's a whole wheel arch. We did have a towel, a towel holder, here. And that fell off the wall twice, so I've replaced it with a, a B&Q special two coat hook. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so, in case of not putting strong enough screws in, because wasn't it the same with the kitchen cupboard? Well, yeah. I mean, you're, the, these boards are so thin now, you know that 
there's nothing in them. They're mainly air, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So you put a screw in there and you put any weight on them mm. and uh, they, they'll fall off. So, yeah. And the other thing I can remember whilst I'm here is the first or second thing that went wrong really was this cupboard door started coming off and the screws they put in there were tiny. So I just replaced them with, with wood screws because mm. there's actually a solid bit of wood there. Would yeah, you believe? I know. Well, it make, used to make quite a noise when it flew open. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it, really, for our four-year review. Yeah, that's it for the four years. We can, you can close that now. I'm going to close that now for another year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll and just start planning uh, trips now. Thinking yeah. Thinking about next year, what we're going to do. Yeah, we're meeting up with Glyn and Sharon uh, a couple next of weeks. Next week. Next week. This week. Uh, and after that, we're going to meet up with Trevor and Sue. We're going to plan our next trip you've already got some ideas haven't you I've got some uh, which I've discussed with you haven't I yeah 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 you didn't fall asleep this time did I not <laughs> no. <laughs> no no we've it must got, have been really exciting then <laughs> we've got a trip to Aaron Isle of Aaron oh yeah in, in May with yeah. Bob and Ailey Bob and Ailey went last year to Aaron and we saw you know what they were yeah looked absolutely wonderful looked there, wonderful didn't it? so we're, we're do, it, it'll be a bit of a get to Aaron and, and relax type holiday. Yeah, we we're doing a little bit of a tour before Aaron, we? Oh, right. Garden okay. Butte and, okay. and round there, going yeah. up to Killing and various things. Okay. Um, and then at the end of June into July, mm -hmm. um, we're going with Glyn and Sharon up the northeast coast. Okay. So we're doing places like Stonehaven and Granton yeah. on Spay. Spay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. That's two things that I'm sort of working out. Thinking of the Cotswolds in April. Right. We'll see, we've got the February show, the October show. Yeah. Um, I don't, we won't be going, I don't think, to the national one in June because we've got two things coming into June and July. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and the Harrogate show, we always go yeah. to that one. Yeah. So, like I said on the uh, previous video, if you haven't already subscribed, if you're one of the 53% who are watching this without subscribing, please subscribe. <laughs> it's actually free. It doesn't yes. cost you anything. It doesn't give you any commitment to watch our videos. No, no. Uh, and uh, we benefit because we get more subscribers and because we get more subscribers, more people watch our videos. We get uh, more encouragement, if you like, and possibly more income. <laughs> yeah, and that it means YouTube see people are subscribing, so therefore they recommend the videos. Yeah, that's what I mean. They? Said that. Oh, did you say that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just to emphasise the point. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, like I say, it doesn't cost you anything, and uh, it makes me happy. And me. And yeah, you. Yeah. I hate it when I, I refresh it, and it's. It, they <laughs> had a, a problem one night, yeah. one time, didn't they? Recently, mm. and it shot down by twenty-five. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, what's what, happened? <laughs> Must have yeah. done a power bank video. <laughs> yeah, that's what I sort of thought. You done one of them again. Uh, yeah. No, you don't normally lose. It's normally five yeah. for one of those. Yeah. But no, um, but they they'd got a problem with their figures. So that phew. Yeah. Incidentally, I'm not planning on making any power bank videos uh, for a while no, at least. No, no, no. I'd, I'd uh, we, unless... We've been offered a gas tester, and I, I looked to see who'd done a gas tester uh, review, and about five million videos came up. So. Probably yeah, not going to be so doing I that. So I am saturated. turning down product reviews. I, you know, people who say we're always doing product reviews, it's not true. No, I mean, I think you're getting about two or three a day. Yeah. Various yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. Power well, banks, some of them spikes. I don't know if they're genuine or not. You know. No, no, you've got to be careful, haven't you? Because there's some scams about. But no, yeah. I mean, you could, you could have said yes to loads. That's right. You haven't. That's right. So I'm a, I'm a goodie. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do take a. a the problem is they take a lot of time mm. and this is, you know, one of those can sometimes take you two to three days, especially yeah, if it's a power yeah. bank and you're trying to show it uh, all in I here. Think, I think we said on our uh, YouTube video that they're not the most popular videos anyway. So you think, well, you know, mm. if it's losing as customers and customers, customers losing, sub subscribers. losing subscribers, uh, yeah, why are we doing them? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, so anyway, so go and visit the shop. And... Yeah, go yeah. visit the shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if you watch this far, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's yeah. Probably about nine million minutes long, so we'll catch up with you soon. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, Bye then. then.